Hey guys, I just wanted to share my opening strategy for expansion with Marignan. This guide is going to be aimed more towards newer players that are struggling with the AI and struggling with killing independents. As you can see here, I've taken 16 provinces by turn 12. If you can take 12 provinces by turn 12, they say you're usually in a good spot. So we've done pretty well for ourselves with this strategy. We have three palisades being built, one here, one here, and one here. They're about one to two turns away from being built, all three of them. And so we're in a pretty good spot. And to start off, we're going to talk about unit composition and the initial expansion phase of the game. Our main unit of choice for expansion is going to be the Knight of Chalice. This is an excellent heavy cavalry unit. 18 protection, 15 defense skill, 13 attack skill. This is one of the best heavy cavs in the game, if not the best. And it is Marignan's staple unit, so I would recommend getting as many of these as possible. And the good thing about this is you don't need 10 Knights of Chalice to expand. You can get away with, ex with an expansion party of 4 to 5 Knights of Chalice and some crossbowmen. Uh, you can also use the initial starting army as well and just put the Knights of Chalice in that starting army. Um, when you're using the Knights of Chalice, typically you typically, okay, I don't have this set up now, but during the initial phase, expansion phase of the game, you want to have these set to attack rear most enemies and you want them set up on the flank either here or here. And what's going to happen is, uh, and also you're going to want your commander blessing them. And what's going to happen is these knights are going to move to the flank of the level of the enemy and hopefully take out the commander and they're going to kill a couple more units and hopefully the rest of them will rout. So that's the main strategy with the Knights of Chalice. Uh, next, we're going to want to talk about Crossbowmen, another staple unit for Marignan. Marignan is a fire nation and we're going to be using Ignite Arrows and Flame Arrows. So we want a lot of Crossbowmen. For Chaff, you can pick Pikeneer, Halberdier, or Swordsman. Um, they don't have shields, so you're going to take a lot of casualties if you're using Crossbowmen. Another unit you can use for Chaff is the Flagellant. The best thing about this unit is you can create this on any province that has a temple. So you can spam temples and spam these units for extra Chaff if you want to. You don't need to for the strategy, but... If you want to, it's this, you know, you can always do that. Once you m move past the initial expansion phase of the game, you're going to want to use man at arms for your main chaff unit. And the reason for this is that this unit has a kite shield. And this is going to help us with friendly fire from the crossbowmen. We're going to take a lot less friendly fire damage because these guys have kite shields. For the Pretender God, there's a few different options you can use. I like to go with an Awake Expander Pretender God, a Marignan. Uh, I believe that this is going to be the best option for newer players. And we went with the Dragon because it has four attacks. It has Fear, which is going to cause units to run away. And it has fly. Now, the good thing about flying is if you're unsure about attacking a specific province, you can switch provinces. And the range on this fly is ridiculous. As you can see, it's like four or five provinces sometimes. Um, so, this is going to give you the best possible outcome. With the least amount of effort meaning that you can attack the weakest provinces and then move on to the next weakest and you have 
a huge selection to go by. One of the benefits to taking this Pretender God as opposed to the other Expander Pretender Gods is that you can change shape. And as you can see, we get 20 research when we're in Mage form. A lot of the Expander Pretender Gods, Awake Expander Pretender Gods, have a debuff now, uh, the Inept Research debuff. And this unit does not. This Pretender God does not, if you're in Mage form. So once you're done expanding, you can move this guy back to your capital and get 20 research. The bless we have for our sacred units is pretty simple. It's nothing extraordinary. One attack skill, plus five to fire res, and awareness for the unsurroundable bonus. Once you're, oh, or at least for magic, when you start researching magic, this is what I recommend you focus on. You want to go enchantment level two first, and that is so we can get ignite arrows. This is also going to give us Wind Runner for our level 1 enchantment. It's going to give us Wind Runner for our Pretender God, which is going to allow him to double his combat speed when it, when he cast it. Once you're done with enchantment 2, you're going to want to go Evocation 2. This is going to give us Flare for our Grandmasters and Flame Bolt for our Witch Hunters. Now, once you're done with Evocation 2, you're going to want to go to Con Conjuration 3. This is going to give us Phoenix Power, which gives us a plus 1 Fire Magic bonus. So if we have a Witch Hunter that's plus 2, that has 2 Fire Levels of Magic, you cast this and now he has 3, plus he has Fire Res. And we're also going to want to go uh, Conjuration 3 for the Summon Lesser Fire Elemental. You can spam these with your research monkeys if you're desperate, or witch hunters, or whatever level 1 fire mage you decide. The main thing about Phoenix Power is it's going to allow us our witch hunters to be level 3 fire magic bonus, and that's going to allow us to cast Flare for, from Evocation level 2. Another bonus from Evocation level 2 is we can use lightning bolt on our pretender god since we took 3 fire and 3 air. So that's going to be the end of the video guys. I wanted to keep this condensed as possible and like I said before this is mainly aimed towards newer players uh, that are struggling with the AI and struggling with independence. I know when I first started Dominions back in Dominions 5, it was very frustrating for me in the initial stages of the game. Uh, I was struggling killing Independence and the AI. This game is incredibly difficult, so I hope this helps uh, somebody out there. We are still unsure about a lot of things about Dominion 6, and I want to do more lengthy videos as far as... Uh, the factions are concerned, so you can definitely expect those more in the future. Right now, I'm just enjoying playing the game and figuring the new changes and mechanics out. I've been playing Dominions since Dominions 5, so a couple of years now. And when I heard about this game coming out, I was really excited. I heard about it two weeks ago. And so I'm definitely going to be producing more content revolving around this game, whether it be shorts or nation overviews so expect to see this more in the future thanks guys